Since its beginning in Texas, the Money Follows the Person program has enabled more than 36,000 people to move out of nursing homes by shifting Medicaid spending from institutional care to home and community-based services. And yet, a growing number of people with mental illness and substance use disorders continue to enter nursing facilities because they are more likely to suffer chronic illness and disability. Nursing facilities cost nearly twice as much as community-based care and are not designed for mental illness or substance use disorder recovery. However, with the right kind of services, these individuals could return to the community. Texas developed the Money Follows the Person Behavioral Health Pilot to provide these services. This video shares the stories of six individuals who have moved back to the community through the program. We are all whole people and the need to belong and the need to um, know that you're accepted uh, you know, is, is key to, you know, to our humanity. Money Follows the Person program is a program to help clients when they're relocating from either being in a nursing home or state institution back out into the community. I go downtown and you know and play chess with my old partners down at uh, Travis Park. It was wonderful just being on your own, you know, having fun, just going places and learning places, learning streets, bus routes, and that type of thing. You know, it's wonderful to take care of your own business. You know, when you're on your own, it's just a whole different ball game. You have your apartment, you have your closet, you have, you can cook, you can go to the store, you can have friends over. So I started cooking a lot of food and think up something I want to cook and I'd get it and go cook it. We moved out here to Medina Lake to a house because I got tired of the apartment scene. The good thing about being out here is that you get a nice view of the rain without actually getting soaking wet. This is when I first started talking to my fiance. This is when I was back in my first apartment. They say the, the quickest way to a man's heart is through his stomach. It also works for women too. The way I landed my fiance was cooking and she loves it. Art is a constant. I work every day, uh, usually in the afternoon. They have art classes. I taught one in calligraphy. Something to get you out of bed, that's right. <laughs> She's just a real benefit to us. Um, I've never seen Stone down. She just seems like she's always um, optimistic and, and happy and makes the most of everything. Everybody really loves Stone around here. Right here is blind. And um, she's encouraging to a lot of us just because of her, uh, her tenacity and, and her, uh, just her optimism and just roll with it attitude. It's that individuals leave institutions for the community and they're not just existing out there. You know, you can institutionalize someone in an apartment and isolate them, but they're engaged and part of their community, and they're achieving the things that are important to them. A growing number of people under 65 going into nursing homes, a number of those have uh, mental health and substance use disorders. It must have been the summer of 2009. My roommate found me on the floor in my apartment and called EMS. And I went to uh, Breckenridge. And I was at Breckenridge quite a while. They literally saved my life. She couldn't, she could not have taken care of herself. She couldn't drive. I mean, she had, you know, how was she going to pay the rent? Just everything. Everything was against her. Unbeknownst to me, I was bipolar schizophrenic and a very severe diabetic. I got very frightened. I uh, was hearing voices. I thought the Secret Service was following me. When she first went into the nursing home, uh, 
it was probably the most, one of the most difficult days I know of my life to sign her in there. I did not want to do that, but we saw there was, there'd be no other place for her. What I understand from what she's told me, she, she worked on her own cars or she was out fishing one day and she had a stroke and nobody was there. Um, so nobody found her for like three days. And I called my sister after about two minutes and I said, you've got to get me out of here someplace else. So she took me to Duval nursing home. When she was in the nursing home, all I could think of was that if she gets out, we're going to be in the hospital. I mean, this is my exact quotes. We're going to be in the hospital in two months. We'll be back in there, the same thing. Originally, before my accident, I was a five-star chef. I, I just, I, I didn't see the purpose. It's, what the hell is the point? I can't do my job anymore. How am I going to cope? I'm supposed to be eco-schizophrenic. Well, I couldn't believe I was bipolar. I kept telling them, I'm in here for my leg, not my head. It literally took my dad getting ready to fight with me for me to understand life goes on. I had no confidence left. I was pretty flat as a pancake. You can go there to die or you can go there to get well. I guess maybe I went there to get well. The whole thing kick-started with me trying to get out of the nursing home with me talking to the social worker. Except you do get institutionalized. They do everything for you. Saying, I want out. I wasn't ready for that yet. My brother was, he, he was yelling at me. He said, how can you? How can you do this? You know, she's, this is, she is no way can she, can she survive on her own. My psychologist finally said, Barbara, it's time for you to get out. It's time for you to go. You're well. But regardless, um, I still had reservations because she's ill and how, how really could she care for herself? Yeah, well, I had nothing left. What was I going to do? Basically, you become rather institutionalized. And as she started to explain the program to me, and as I talked to the social workers, and I talked to the people at STAR and what they were gonna do and how they were gonna set her up and what the Rebecca Baines Johnson facility was and, and all the aspects of that program, it just sounded better and better and better. I had to learn how to get back out on my own again. You know, I came, I kind of came to this um, sensibility was, it, it, she's gotta take that shot. So it was, what am I gonna do? How am I going to proceed? Because if she has one chance, I mean, if she fails, so be it. But it's better than just staying in that nursing home. So why don't we give this a chance? And it seemed like there was so much support behind it that it was a, it was a, a good bet. It was a, a good chance to take. It was a weighted risk, but a good risk. And this came along. And there's a lot of help and good people. I could have never done this alone. We're out to help people rehabilitate, to help people get better and realize their goals, help them first articulate their goals. What do I want to do? Do I have dreams? Do I have hopes? Are people not going to laugh when I say what they are? And are they going to find ways, small and large, to help me get there? That was the key. As long as I had a caregiver, a caregiver, I can function. Well, I had wonderful therapists. But she came over and check on us from time to time to make sure that we were okay. And I said, Kim, there is nobody like you. Nobody would go out of their way and stoop to do what you've done. I know one particular person, I don't know even know who, who it was, one of her, took her to Barnes, my sister likes to read, took her to Barnes and Nobles and let her buy books gave her a gift card to Barnes & Nobles, and I thought, wow, what is, who are these people that are doing all this, all this for her? And then uh, it turned out to be very successful. I really appreciate it. My mother, I don't know that my mother would go this far. I really, really appreciate it. I'm very grateful to this program. I mean, they give you furniture. Uh, Y'all made sure she had food, you made sure she had sheets, you made sure she had everything that she needed. Without them, 
I wouldn't have anything in my apartment. So when I got here, everything was in place. It was wonderful. It's night and day since she got in this program. We have a much better relationship than we have had in a long time. This program has provided her the opportunity to regain her life. I, I honestly can't say enough about that. It's, it's night and day. It's night and day. Since 2008, we have now realized that a lot of our individuals find this um, independence of being back in the community where they had been told all along, you're going to live the rest of the time in the nursing facility. So learning that they can do for themselves is the rehabilitation, is the therapy for them. Well, for somebody who ended up with nothing, this sounded like <laughs> heaven. I try to help as many people as I can. That's why I agreed to this. If it helps people understand that if you go through a traumatic experience in your life, you can bounce back. You have to have somebody out there that can help you along the way. It's amazing, just amazing uh, how successful she's been. They manage. She's got her car back and yesterday was her birthday and she and her boyfriend went to the park. They are, she's happy. Yeah, she made it. It's amazing. Just glad to see everybody again. You know, we all made it one more week. We all made it one more week. And the former client that I'm talking about, he's the leader of the recovery uh, spirituality group. So I'm living in call uh, apartments right now. And I'm living in a two bedroom, even though I'm paralyzed from the chest down. And uh, I just want to thank God. And right now I'm trying to give back to the community. It's a one time deal, you know? And so at that time you got to buy all the food that you're going to buy. My pastor asked me to do a group once I got out. You're getting better with your speech too and everything. You know that? By the grace of God. Because of our assistance, he was wanting to help others who were in the same situation. And so I decided to live my life to the fullest and give back to the community. If we feed negative thoughts and bad thoughts, they're going to get strong and they're going to take over our lives. If we feed good thoughts, positive thoughts, things that are lovely, things that are kind. What I'm gonna do for my recovery? I'm gonna, you know, and we, we start thinking about positive things, then the positive thing will take over. Whether it's with communication or whether it's just getting out of bed in the morning and um, functioning because of a mental illness, then, you know, here they find something in common, a love of art. We had an official opening, Stone was here. She's been experimenting with uh, using her left hand uh, now, whereas she was right-handed before the stroke. The name of the piece is Wait a Year. She won us all over. She's an amazing uh, asset to our, our community. And her artwork, which sustains her through everything, her creativity. And this allowed, this situation, I can't tell you, allowed this to blossom. The artwork that she was doing in the nursing home was almost by rote. And you could see when she moved out and then she got in her place and we bought her the first present that um, we got her as a, a Christmas gift was a drafting table so she could do her artwork. And you could see she started to just do some more different things. And it started real simple. And then they started to get a little more abstract. And now she's doing some very complicated and complex work that is so much closer to what she used to do. I mean, it's, it's like getting her back. It's sure is a pleasure to be here with such fine artists. We did a good job, didn't we? I can't think of anything else I'd rather do except make art. I love to make art. I wanted to go back to school and get my chef license. You know, I wanted to be a chef. You want to go from here to an apartment by the river? No. House. A house by the river. Okay. <laughs> so that's your future goal is to get a house yeah. by the river. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, what and you, work. And work. <laughs> so what kind of work do you want to do? A printer. 
You want to be a printer? Again. Yeah. Probably within the next six to seven months, I am going to try and get my license and a van to where I can get around myself. Yeah, I love to read. I'm a ferocious reader. This is, could be, some people call it the end, but this could be the beginning. The beginning, a new beginning.